Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Finance with K, the side of YouTube where we focus on personal finance and we focus on you, the person, more than the finance itself. So, welcome. My name is K Mbubu and I am a money management coach. Today, as you can see, the title <clears throat> we are taking it back to church. We are taking it back to church today. We are going to be talking about this money <laughs> that we wake up every day working for. This money that is giving us shelter. This money that is paying our kids school fees, putting food on the table. And we hear that this money is evil. Really? From where? From where? And when we ask, they go like, the Bible says so. So today we are taking it back to the original book of life which is the Bible. We are taking it back to church. And I think um, I'm going to start these videos where we are talking about wealth and the Bible because there are people that believe that God wants us to be poor. Not my God, not my Jesus Christ. Maybe we don't have the same God. The one, the Messiah, the one that I praise, the one that created me, does not want me to be poor. Does not want me to have sleepless nights because I cannot provide actually he is the provider he provides the money for me so let's take it back to church today is money really evil where is that thing coming from remember the video that i've made we were talking about always find out where things are coming from don't just believe what people are saying even me go and research what i'm saying because you know everything you must always research so i am a christian i was born and i grew up in church my grandparents are pastors my maternal grandmother was a church leader i was i want to tell you that guys i am a christian i love the lord i love jesus christ i've played in the church i've dated in the church everything 80 percent of my life i've done it in the church and as a christian and one of the things that i suffered from was this thing about money don't see me like this i was once like some of other people maybe some of you who believe that money is evil i was like the more poor i am the closer i am to god so I need to be poor so that God can be more closer to me because that's what was being taught in certain places and certain churches. And I would love to tell you, even in the church where I grew up in, that's the angle that they used. So when I was growing up, I didn't understand. I was like, but God, then why should I study? Why should I go work if money is evil? Why then does everything in this world requires money? Why is food not just falling from heaven like well, well, the same way it did with the Egyptian? Why? Why do I need, when I go to a public toilet, I need two rand or five rand to go there? And then they tell us that money is evil. And then I was like, God, it does not make sense to me. And then it was not making sense because it's not the truth. It's not the truth. People read verses, people interpret verses the way that they want to interpret it. So we are taking it back to the Bible today. Let's first go. No, I don't want to go to the verse that um, says people are misinterpreting. <laughs> I actually, I actually want to go to the verses that God gave me when I was in that journey of asking him that, can did this world why is the money an issue when we find churches that are teaching about money and they're told of teaching about um, biblical wealth that we are told that they're teaching prosperity gospel and are we not allowed to be prosperous yet there are verses in the bible that talks about you know you will be prosperous in everything that you do why is the prosperity or prosperous that is in the Bible excluding money? And there are verses that talk about God will give you more than you ask for. And then you are told that more than you ask for excludes money. Life in abundance excludes money. I did not understand that. And then there are a few verses I'm going to share, maybe two today, so that the video is not long. Because majority of Christians 
they suffer just like I used to suffer. They are so they are caught in between. They think if they start managing money, that's why they can't even manage money. That's why they end up misusing money because they don't even pray for their money. They don't pray for their finances. They don't pray for wisdom to be able to manage money. And they forget that we are the stewardship. God gives us this wealth for us to manage and also to grow it because he gives us the wisdom. And if we don't pray for that um, department, the devil is going to come and it's going to be a playground of the devil. That's why you find majority of the Christians, they suffer when it comes to their finances because they are not putting God in it because they were made to believe that money and God don't go hand in hand. By who? And why? Okay, let's get to the verses. Right, I have um, the first verse in Ecclesiastes. I love that verse. I once shared this verse and a lot of people were like, okay, it can't be in the Bible. You are reading the wrong Bible. I'm like, <laughs> this verse is in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19. And then it reads as follows. This is the NIV. A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is the answer for everything. I mean, if money is the answer for everything, how then can the money be evil? The rest of the verse. Like always, guys, go and read the whole verse so that you can get the whole context. Né? Please, I know uh, people are going to say, but what was the context? Go and read that for yourself as I'm giving you the verse. But I'm also trying to show you that money is there in the Bible and it's there written the way that it is because it answers everything. Like I said, school fees, shelter, cars, whatever that we do, 95% it's money. 95% it's money. And if we did not have the money, we wouldn't have 95% of the things that we do. So it is part of everything. In actual fact, in this verse, it, it's the answer to everything. And there's this one, this verse I like the most because it really shows that the wealth that we have, it comes from God. <laughs> Guys, the money we have comes from God. How can God give us something that is evil? How can God give us something that is evil? All right. Um, in Ecclesiastes 5 verse 19, I love, I love this verse. Like the day God showed me this verse, my life was never the same. I don't want to lie. My life was never the same. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 19, is it 19? Let me see. Yes. Hear this name. If God gives us wealth, who gives us wealth? If God gives us wealth and property, hey, let us enjoy them. We should be grateful and enjoy what we have worked for. Hear this last part. It is a gift from God. God. <laughs> Wealth, the properties that we have, everything that we are working for, for, it's a gift from God for us to enjoy. So now you ask yourself, money is evil? While money is the gift from God, why are you waking up in the morning going to work? Beside other things, money is also part of it. And majority of it, it's money. So it's a gift from God and we are owed to enjoy them. Not for us to sit and say money is evil. You're not supposed to have money. While the Bible is telling us that it's a gift from God. So you need to be telling me which Bible are you reading. Because the Bible that I'm reading is telling me that the things that I'm working for, is the wealth and wealth, holistic wealth, including financial wealth, properties, those are the gift from God. Let's go to the, to the next verse. 20. Hmm. Since God has allowed us to be happy, we will not worry too much about how short life is. And how many times are we always saying, life is short? While we are enjoying the things, this wealth, this property, these things that are a gift from God, God wants us to be happy and we need to forget how short life is. 
tell me are you not gonna are you gonna forget about sh how short life is when you're in financial distress because financial distress will affect your physical health your mental health your spiritual health that's why the devil wants you to believe that money is evil because when you start not praying for that money for that finances for that financial wealth he then comes and feed you lies and make you to be in a position where your your life is distressed because your financial life is distressed you are over indebted because the devil is lying to you so now we're going to go to the verse that brought all this thing to say money is evil let's go to that verse and read it and listen carefully guys and go and read those verses again okay timothy 6 verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil let's break it down did the verse say money is evil the verse said for the love of money not money the love when now you love money more than your life more than god now when everything you do in your life it's about money you are now putting money as your god that is the root of all evil not money money it's not so it's the person who is now desiring this money that it's a gift from god but they're desiring it in a place where they're idolizing it then it becomes the evil part love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and some people please guys let's let's get to this part craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows it's not money that is the problem it's the person who ends up putting money as a god who ends up doing evil things to get the money defrauding people scamming people killing people so let's not confuse the verse it never said money is evil what is evil what is the root of evil it said is the love of the money it never said the root of evil is money now we are going to say that money is evil but the root of evil is the love of it when you are now selfishly loving this money more than God, loving this money more than yourself, killing people, defrauding people, and now causing and doing evil things because you want this money. So I hope today we have answered the question that is written on the title, Is Money Really Evil? And because the love of money is done by people, we don't want to talk about that. Because anything that has to, has to do with you confronting me as a person, I don't want to talk about it. Then what would we do? We blame the money. Or we allow the devil to lie to us and say the money is the problem. So that our financials can always be in a place where they are distressing us that we can't even praise God. Ah, today we are taking you to church. We are preaching today. Today we are taking it back from where it was supposed to start. So the other verses showed us. The second one, most importantly, it's a gift from God. Wealth, it's a gift from God. Properties, it's a gift from God. To do what? To enjoy. To enjoy, not to be stressful about it not to kill people for those things when we start doing that when we now start loving this money and then start doing bad things to get this money that is the problem so christians let's stop um glamorizing poverty poverty there's nothing glamour there's nothing glamour about poverty of la or lack of financial wealth Guys, let's be honest, asking people, worrying about what you're going to eat tomorrow, worrying about if the child will be taken out of school because you do not pay school fees, worrying about if the bank is going to repossess the property. Do you think that's what God wants for us? 
Do you think the abundance that God spoke about, it's that abundance? If that it, it is to you, it's not to me. I believe that same as Matthew 6, don't worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow, what you're going to do tomorrow. If God can provide and providing through this money that I have, why then are we calling this gift from God evil? Why are we then allowing the devil to lie and twist the verse? And then we are busy, distressed, we can't pray, we can't go to church because, you know, um, our finances, people are calling us, you are owing everybody in your community. It's taking away your dignity. It's taking away the respect. And then we want to sit as Christians and believe that no money is evil. We don't put God and money in the same equation. According to who and from which Bible? Because what I've read here is saying it's a gift from God. So don't believe in that lie. Because while you start be when you start believing in that lie, you are gonna stop praying for your finances and immediately you remove God from your finances. Your finances are going to die. Because we don't build anything without God as Christian. We build everything with God. I used to host finance prayers on TikTok. People will ask me, why are you pay praying for finances? Because as a Christian, I know that the money we have is a provision from God. And we need his wisdom to be, so that we can know how to manage this money. You can't do it alone. <laughs> you will fail dismally. Your money won't grow. When you touch money, it's going to go. You will feel like money is just going through your fingers because you are not putting the main thing, the main thing, which is God, because you are believing in the lie. Money is evil. Wealth is evil. We are supposed to suffer. Yet we are saying, you know, God, there's a verse that talks about um, God, you know, um, the owner of gold and there's a gate of gold and all those nice things. And then the same God, we're saying, no, God, <laughs> um, no, money is evil. You can't give me money, no prosperity, wealth is evil. You just want me to suffer. Not the God that I serve. Not the Messiah that I serve. Not the Trinity that I serve. Not my creator. And because I was once like you, where I believed that God does not want to bless me financially, I know what it does to your finances and I'm here to tell you it's not the truth. Pray for your finances. Pray for your finances. Pray for the wisdom to take care of your finances. Because without God, you can't do anything. Without Jesus Christ, you can't do anything. I can come tell you what to do. You can watch all the financial gurus, but at the end of the day, the biggest the biggest person you need is God. And again, God will lead you to people that you need to listen to when it comes to your finances. So don't neglect your finances when it comes to prayer and your spiritual life because you believe that it's evil. Today, I hope this answers you. And today, before we close, I'm just hearing it in my spirit that we should pray for our finances. Maybe I should bring back the, the, the finance prayers. Maybe I should bring them back because we used to do them on TikTok Live. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the revelation of truth. We thank you for this opportunity to come, God, and pray for our finances because we know that you are the provider. We have read it from your word that you gift us this world so that we can be able to enjoy them. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everybody who's watching this video right now, who has believed in the lie of the devil, who says that money is evil and they've stopped praying for their finances. They've stopped praying for the wisdom of their finances. Father God, I say today, let the truth be revealed and let the lie be crushed. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, let them read the word and let them read with the understanding of the Holy 
Spirit because the Bible says that your word does not return to you void. And Lord, we now know that money, according to your to the Bible, is the answer to everything. And Father God, we ask for wisdom to take care of this money that you have given us, to take care of our finances, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we don't want to believe in the lie anymore. We don't want to believe in the lie that people are saying that money is evil. We don't want to misinterpret what your word says because your word says the love of money is the root of evil. Help us not to love money more than you. Help us not to love money to an extent that we do evil things we seen to get that money. Help us, Father God, to know that this money is gift, financial wealth, it's gift that comes from you, our Father, our Creator, our Provider. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bless everybody in your name, Lord, in their finances. I pray for wisdom of um, financial management, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that please lead everybody where they need to go for them to get more education about finances. They must not just go to anyone who is teaching worldly stuff because, Father God, whatever we do in this world without you, it's in vain. Whatever we do without putting you first, whatever we do without including your word is in vain. Father God, I thank you for the truth. I thank you that today, Lord, you have revealed the truth to people that have been confused about wealth in our Christian work. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your faithfulness and I pray, God, continue providing for us. Father God, continue showing us the wells where we need to go and dip out. Father God, and, and just like you did with the disciples when they were catching fish and they didn't catch anything. Father God, show us the right place where we need to put our net so that we can get the fish. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for your leadership. We pray for your guardians. And I pray for everybody who's listening to this, who's watching to, who's watching this. Bless their finances in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for my clients. Father God, lead me to the clients that you know you have deposited wisdom in me for them. You, you have deposited a word from me to them in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for your love, your mercy, and for your provision in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. So guys, don't, don't stop. If you haven't started, go and start. Pray for your finances. Never in your life think God does not care about the finances he gave you in the first place. It's a gift. Stop believing that money is the devil. Money is evil. Money is a gift from God. We as people, we tend it to be to look like it's evil because of the desires that we have, the love of it, where we start idolizing it. But if we pray for the wisdom, God is gonna help us to manage this money well and not to fall into the trap of loving the money more than we love God. As always on this page, we know we, we share this with other people. Somebody sitting stressed because he or she believed in the fact that money is evil. Share this video with that person. Share this truth that we read. It's not Kay's truth. It's not my truth. It, I did not read this from a novel. I read this from the Bible. I read this from the Bible. Thank you so much. I will see you guys on my next video. God bless you. I love you. And I will let you know when um, the prayers will be returning because they used to happen 12 a.m. And the funny part is that when I'm recording this, it's exactly um, 12. I'm recording this at night. It's um, 0057. It's almost 1 a.m. So I think the Holy Spirit just wanted me to do this video at the time where I used to do the prayers for our finances. When they're back, I'll give you, um, I'll let you guys know, but they were normally on my TikTok. Maybe I'll bring them here on YouTube and they're normally live. So thank you so much, guys. I love you. Bye.